It's never just a memorial. It's never just a memorial. These words escaped my lips last Thursday when I was meeting with some colleagues and were rightly met with a rather horrified expression on the face of one of them. Let me give you a little context. Many of you may know that a few months back there was a tragic and rather high profile murder in the homeless community here in Livermore. Uh, it was a gun murder and both victim and perpetrator were people uh, who were living down in the Arroyo in what has uh, regrettably become an ever-expanding encampment. Uh, and we had seen them here on occasion at St. Bartholomew's, and so this was something that hit rather close to home. And I began to cook up an idea, and I ran it by some of my ecumenical clergy colleagues, and they said, you know, that's really, really worth pursuing. Back when I served in San Francisco, an interfaith committee would always put together a memorial service right at the winter solstice. It would be right there at Civic Center Plaza, so front and center location, for all the homeless who had died in San Francisco that past year. And I thought, you know, even though it's a smaller scale, um, given that this has happened, it would probably be fitting to do something of that sort here in Livermore. So the idea began to brew, and um, around about September, I began to bring it to the attention of some of our public officials and ask, you know, what, what do you think of this? And I got a very mixed reaction. And one official in particular actually asked for a personal conversation, and we went rather deep with it. He said, you know, Andy, I'm concerned that this may end up having exactly the opposite effect of what you're hoping it will have. And what he presented to me is a community that is becoming quite divided and quite agitated around this issue. Everybody, of course, agrees that the fact that a large number of our, an ever larger number of our neighbors are unable to find their way to sustainable housing is a serious problem that needs to be dealt with. Uh, the ensuing problems of public health and violence, of course, are serious problems that need to be dealt with, but that's where the agreement ends. The disagreement is what's the best pathway for dealing with it. And there is one huge faction that says as many services as possible, as great a degree of compassion as possible is what's called for. And there's another group that says part of the problem is perhaps we're making this a little bit too easy. And so we're attracting more violence and more of a public health crisis by making this a little bit too easy. And, and there's sort of a brewing clash. And what this official said is by shining the light on what happened late last summer, you may actually be sort of pouring some gasoline on those flames. I advise you to be very, very careful. Hence my line, it's never just a memorial. Well, when I said that, my colleague looked at me and said, do you realize how horrible it is that you have to say something like that because it really should be just a memorial. Why is it that to do something as simple, as grounded in our faith, as earthy, as memorializing somebody who has passed on, has become a political statement where you have to tread so carefully? And as we approached this particular Sunday, I thought, wow, she is absolutely right. Now that doesn't mean that we can dismiss all of the baggage, but at least in the context of our worship and our life of faith, we can remember to come back to the basics. So this particular Sunday is known as Remembrance Sunday. It always tends to coincide in the secular calendar with Veterans Day, and you've probably noticed all the hymns and all the readings
Indians very much had a death and resurrection theme to them. Now it begs the question, why do we pay so much attention to this? Why do we look at this theme of death and resurrection? Why do we have rituals around memorializing and to some extent extolling those who have gone before us? Well, it only makes sense if we remember a memorial is just a memorial. It is actually a celebration and an acknowledgement of something very simple. And that is God's grace and love towards us and towards all who have gone before us. God's promise to raise from the dead, not by our own merits, but according to God's loving promise, all those who have gone before us, and in our time, us as well. That is the sum total of it. That is why we have funerals. That is why we have a Remembrance Sunday. Nothing more and nothing less. There's no political statement here. There's not even a statement about the merits of ourselves or of the people we're remembering. We celebrate the people we remember not because they were great people, not because they were not great people. It's not our business to even judge that. We celebrate them because what we're really celebrating is God's grace and God's promise of resurrection. That is it. A memorial is just a memorial. And it's especially important to remember that in the context of Veterans Day. Why do we honor and remember veterans? Were they great people, greater than the rest of us? Maybe some of them had some really noble characteristics, but they're human like the rest of us. Were they worse people than the rest of us? No. The same thing. We remember and honor veterans not because of their own personal merits or lack thereof, but because we are acknowledging God's love and grace in a place where it may be especially hard to see. Because it's awfully easy to make the mistake that in remembering and extolling veterans, we're somehow extolling the military or the war in which they participated, and we most certainly are not. I do invite you to remember, as Dwight Eisenhower often reminded America, that nobody hates war and loves peace more than most soldiers and veterans. So we're not in any way propping up or extolling the system in which, doing the best they could, they may have had to live and move for a season of their lives. All we are doing, the sum total of it, is celebrating God's love and grace, shown to them and shown to a broken world that even can conceive of something along the line.